On April 15th, Rockstar will make a change that will not only negatively affect GTA 6, but more importantly, the people building it. Developers being forced to leave, a potential for crunch, and even a strike could be in the future for Rockstar's developers. I want to shed a light on this problem and go over why this could be the scummiest thing Rockstar has ever done and could have way more repercussions than we think. So first, what happened? Well, on February 28th, Jen Colby, the head of publishing at Rockstar, sent an email to all of its developers demanding they return to the office five days a week for the final stretch of GTA 6's development. The reason Rockstar gave for this is that in-person work would not only increase productivity, but also provide more security from further leaks. Which all sounds good and well until you realize this isn't the true reason they are actually doing this. More on that in a bit. However, while Rockstar may see the tangible benefits of this decision, the developers don't share the same sentiment. Just last year, the Independent Workers Union of Great Britain, or IWGB, had 170 Rockstar employees sign a petition opposing mandatory three days in office, and now Rockstar have told them they need to be in five days, so naturally they are very upset. But that's not all they're upset about. The reason this is such a big issue is because instead of being given a reasonable amount of time for developers to get their affairs in order to meet Rockstar's demand, they were given a whole six weeks of notice to comply with these changes, and Rockstar isn't speaking with their developers about the matter. Plainly put, Rockstar has given their employees two choices, either comply or quit. Because starting on April 15th, all remote development programs will be shut down. After this info was made public, many employees have criticized Rockstar for going back on their word after they promised employees that this exact thing wouldn't happen. And what's even worse is that although Rockstar may say it's for increased productivity and better security, that may not be the only reason that they're doing this. Something that's important, but equally as depressing to note, is that this is not only something Rockstar is doing, it's actually happening industry-wide. Star Citizen developer Cloud Imperium Games, or CIG for short, did something arguably worse, which was moving their head studio to a different country and then gave employees the same treatment, which they even said in their statement. Now that we are back in the office and seeing the progress and quality of work when our teams are in person working together, we have decided to co-locate as much development as possible, which has resulted in some minor staffing changes as we move some development positions closer to their core teams. Ubisoft and Activision were also criticized for the same practices just a few months ago. So it isn't only Rockstar doing this sort of thing. However, Rockstar has seemed to face more repercussion from this due to two factors. One is obviously GTA 6, but the second is because of Rockstar's history of crunch culture and overwork in the past. Back in 2018, just before the release of RDR2, Rockstar was accused of horrible working conditions within the company, from toxic managers to heavy drinking, mental breakdowns, and 80-hour work weeks, which were common to see at Rockstar leading up to Red Dead Redemption 2's release. This article sparked widespread attention and forced Rockstar to change its ways around how they deal with massive workloads close to their game's launch. The reason this is relevant is because developers who are forced back to office believe Rockstar will revert back to old ways and will once again be overworked until GTA 6 finally releases. Now, one thing that I'm seeing a lot from this is people actually criticizing the developers saying five days is normal and they need to stop crying or whatever it is they're saying. One thing I need to make very clear is that they are not complaining about working five days. They are undoubtedly doing that right now. What people forget is a lot of the developers were hired to work remotely, meaning that for a lot of people commuting to the office in a different country isn't even slightly feasible. A buddy of mine in the GTA YouTuber space, Cyberboy, actually did an interview with a Rockstar employee about this matter, and I think he puts it best. 
your contract was a remote contract and you've been told you've got six weeks to start making an appearance in the office five days a week. You can't get out of a tenancy agreement because usually they are fixed in place for 12 months or two years. You can't just sell your house in six weeks. You can't pull your kids out of their local school. You can't just say to your partner, by the way, you're gonna have to get a new job near Rockstar in Edinburgh, for example. You can't do any of that stuff. So you're left in a situation where you've got two options, leave Rockstar or completely upheave your life for a job that pays you 45,000 pounds a year. If you want to watch the full interview, the link is in the description, and I highly recommend you watch that for more insight on how this is affecting the developers right now. Even worse is that at Rockstar, if you don't finish the game, you won't be credited in it. So if you are one of these people who were hired during the pandemic, worked three plus years on the game, but now can't meet the back to office demands, you won't be put in the credit at the end of the campaign. This is ultimately a scare tactic on Rockstar's end to make you comply with their demands, or your name won't be cemented in the history of GTA 6. And while all of this sounds bad already, it could be that this is exactly what Rockstar wants, and why after GTA 6 finally releases, there still might be some worse to come. While Rockstar have done some arguably shady stuff in the past, these soft layoffs may just be the start of the end for a lot of their developers. A theory I have seen going around with this is the idea that Rockstar knows full well people will leave, and in fact, they are hoping for it. Whenever any company announces mass layoffs, it is almost always met with scrutiny. However, these games companies may have found a loophole around that. Instead of laying off a bunch of people at once, you instead give them demands you know they can't do, forcing them to quit instead of being laid off, and a lot of people believe this is only the start, and once GTA 6 is released, an official mass layoff will begin. And even worse is there is some evidence from Rockstar to support this as well. After the release of the first Red Dead Redemption, Rockstar San Diego laid off a number of its employees, stating this. As is typical with game development, our team sizes have always fluctuated over the course of the development cycle. As Rockstar San Diego transitions from the launch of Red Dead Redemption onto future projects, we are realigning our resources in order to continue to develop games as effectively as possible. So now, when you look at RDR2, which had over 2,000 people working on the development of that game, it's not unreasonable to think that Rockstar hired a bunch of extra talent to help build GTA 6, but once it's released, they realistically only need one studio making the GTA Online updates, leading to mass layoffs after development anyway, even after a lot of people quit from not being able to commute to the office. This whole situation just screams Rockstar saying, thank you for making this game, but we don't need you anymore. And it's a shame given the fact that these people are the ones making and designing the game we will all get next year. And come April 15th, I truly think GTA 6 will take a massive hit if Rockstar isn't careful and doesn't treat its developers with a little more leniency. But until that day comes, I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.